uh, hence uh, this particular workshop or uh, this particular uh, presentation is going to be all around uh, how we can make math more engaging at the same time more uh, beneficial for the child so that you know they are not just viewing maths as one of the subjects but also an important life skill that they would require uh, so having said that uh, let's dive into why we are here so if you all can just quickly unmute yourselves i have listed a few reasons uh, but if any one of you could just uh, you know unmute yourself and tell me uh, why you all are here uh, then that will help me uh, design my workshop according to your needs. Anybody would like to go? Yes, I am here. Because, yes. Uh, I am an enthusiast about maths. Okay. And there's one, one reason. Another reason is that IGCSE is a, a kind of syllabus where mm -hmm. you need to always sharpen your <laughs> skills. Yes. And uh, then one more thing is that very practical thing is that I'm helping my family, friends, son, children. Right. And if I get any guidance, it will be beneficial for them. Right. right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Utkarsh or Sapna, whoever is around. Yeah. Hi, Sulbha. Um, hi. This is Sapna. So yeah. um, as we had discussed, uh, I have been, uh, you know, uh, struggling primarily with the word problems with my daughter right. and even though we already started uh, you know something which has started working little bit with her is uh -huh. uh, we, we uh, she likes art so i have started to make her draw every problem so Very nice. so you know uh, especially we are prep right now we are doing physics uh, motion uh, hmm. as concept so, yes. so I make her draw it uh, like, you know, the movements every single time because uh, I have seen that as she reads the problem and tries to attempt it, it's always wrong answer she gets. Right. But uh, when she draws it, she's actually able to see what is actually happening in the problem. And uh, yes. at least 50% uh, problems are, uh, you know, solved correct now with that. Right. So any further inputs I can get in that area will surely help, I think. That's actually one of the strategies that I'm going to talk about in detail today, uh, Sapna. So thanks for bringing that up. And yes. you're already headed in the right direction. So uh, <laughs> it's a good thing. Uh, yes. Mr. Venkat, are you able to unmute uh, yourself? Okay. In case he is not, uh, so these are few reasons why, you know, people who had asked me to do this particular workshop, these were a few things that they had in mind that, you know, children are struggling with math or they're scared of maths or, you know, they have developed total hatred and reluctant to study math. Okay. Uh, my child needs help or they've tried everything, but nothing is working. So if any of these reasons are there, then I think this workshop will definitely be helpful because I will discuss a couple of strategies. Some I'm just going to take you through uh, in a jiffy, but some I'm going to go really in deep. Okay, so we are going to play like a game. It's uh, a very simple thing. It's a word cloud. So you can quickly scan the QR code from your phone or you can go to mentimeter.com and I'll give you all a code. And you can enter that code. Uh, one sec. I'm just going to escape my view. One sec. Give me one quick second. I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to share my other screen. Yes. You can go to mentimeter.com or menti.com. And when you go there, they will ask you for a code. Okay, so your code is 38070068. 38070068. If you want me to send you the link in the chat, I can do that. So I have also pasted the link in the chat. You can directly click on that link in the chat and you will be in the menti.com. Yeah. So I've just asked a very simple question. And that is, what is one strategy that you have taken 
Sapna has already answered that question. Sapna, you could repeat and add a few more if you want. Okay. And let's see how our word cloud starts taking shape. Hello. May I know who's joined in? Hello. Hi. If anybody is struggling with this, let me know. So some uh, somebody is joined right now. Uh, I want you to log in on menti.com and use this code. I've put the link in the chat. I can repaste it for you. Okay, so I can see some responses. Drawing shop. Okay. Others can answer as well. Let's make this interactive. We'll wait for two more minutes for others to put in their responses. Okay. Maps, clothes measurements. Okay. Okay, one more minute. All right. Shopping seems to be one of the most uh, important thing, tangible things. Yes, very good. Day-to-day -day situations. Yes. Clothes measurement. So the word that actually grows in size, uh, so those of you who are doing menti for the first time, the, the word that grows in size is the most common response. So what we are observing here is that shopping is something that you're like using as a strategy to teach mathematics. That's wonderful. Okay, so I'm just going to close it for the, for the time being. We'll come back to it. If you have any more ideas, you can keep popping the responses. All right. So let's go to a question. Okay, since we are doing math, we better solve some maths, right? All right. Uh, let's go to the next slide. All right. So, for example, one of the strategies that many people suggest that we should use is using keywords. Has anybody heard about keywords? Anybody? No, no I haven't heard about it. Keywords. Okay. Is it? Keywords. Keywords. Yeah, keywords. Now, what do I mean by keywords? For example, when I uh, started my journey as a teacher, I thought that, you know, I'm doing wonderful by teaching my kids keywords, especially when it comes to word sums. What do I mean by that? For example, I used to tell my students that, okay, whenever you see the word sum, that means you have to add. Or whenever you see a word like product, that means you have to multiply. Or when you see a word like all together, that time you have to add. Okay, so that was one of the strategies that I felt and I was very happy that, you know, I'm really helping my students uh, do very well by using these keywords. Now, right now, I'm not saying that keywords is bad. 
keywords can be a good start, but it cannot be everything. Uh, you'll understand the reason by this example. So this says that there are three boxes of chicken nuggets on the table and each box contains six nuggets. So how many nuggets are there in all? So there comes our keyword, right? How many are there in all? So according to what I have taught my children, like basis only on the keywords, what will they look? They will look at three, they will look at six, and they will look at this word. So what do you think their answer would be? Based on the strategy that I gave? Some children may add even because... Exactly, they will add only <laughs> because I have told them that in all means some, no? Right? Because I'm te teaching them keyword driven. So I'm saying that, okay, three plus six is equal to nine. So I have told them that, okay, this means that it is nine. But is that the correct answer? No. So under such circumstances, what do we do? So a simple drawing, a simple box drawing could have actually made more sense. How so? For example, we tell them, okay, we had three boxes. So we are just drawing rough diagrams. Now each box contains six. Now what happens? The entire dynamics changes because now the child is able to visualize what Sapna was saying exactly that way that when we are seeing the problem, we are understanding what is happening. Now, even if they plus it or they multiply it, they will get the desired answer. Do you all agree with me? Right? So if I do like a 6 plus 6 plus 6 in this case, they will get an 18. But if I would have done otherwise just by using the keywords, then my child would have done a wrong answer. So that is why when you all are training as a teacher or as a parent, when you are training the child, help them to visualize the problem. And that's this workshop all about. Today, we are talking a lot about visualizing and I'll teach all different methods by the end of this. Okay, let's take another problem. Suppose Ganga left 50 rupees on the table. Her brother left 100 rupees on the table. How much money was left on the table? Now, again, when I am teaching them a keyword, I have told them that what is left means subtraction. So what do you think this child would answer? What do you think you will answer? <laughs> Absolutely. The child may minus. because Exactly. Just he will say that's 50 rupees. However, the answer that we are expecting is 150. Right? Now, why did this happen? Because we've not given them a perspective. We have just told them to blindly follow the keywords. We have just told them, okay, left means subtraction. In all means addition. So these kind of blunders, if we want to avoid, then we need to help them with other techniques as well in addition to uh, this technique, right? Moving on, let's take another example just to be very sure. Now, uh, I want you all to tell me what is the keyword in this particular sentence. Everybody's understood what is keywords, right? Keywords means the words that will help you to choose an operator. What do I mean by operator? Either a plus, a minus, a subtraction, a multiplication, division, whatever it may be. So can you all identify the operator for me in this particular problem? Just by picking out a keyword. I think rest can be a keyword. Okay. Anybody else? Any other view? Please let's make this interactive. Otherwise, it's going to be very boring. It's going to be like a teacher-teacher thingy. What could be the keyword? Our keywords were in all. Rest. Which, uh, sorry? One of the, it could be rest. Like it could rest be rest. Of... Yeah. Rest could be one of the things. But otherwise, there are no typical keywords in this problem, right? So when a child sees a problem like this, you know what happens to the child? The child is in a state of panic. Why? Because my teacher, my mama, my dada, my friend has told me to look for keywords. And now, to my surprise, I cannot see any keywords in this. 
So what happens instantly, psychologically, the child goes in a traumatic state because the child is not able to find keywords. That is why it was very important that when we are describing a word problem to our children, we need to tell them the context. We need to help them imagine things. I'm going to introduce you all later to one concept, which is called as the CPA concept. What do I mean by a CPA concept? Now, math is called as an abstract subject. It's called abstract because you can't imagine it. So the approach that is followed in the textbooks, any textbook I'm talking about, is actually a A se start hone wala concept. That means it starts itself with an abstract, which is why children fear mathematics a lot. Because for them to imagine something that is so abstract is very difficult. So we want to introduce a CPA concept to them. What does CPA stand for? First, you make it concrete. What do I mean by concrete? Concrete means we are going to give them something that they can see with their eyes. For example, when we say we use objects. For example, if I'm giving them a set of pens and I'm saying them, okay, count them. There is very little chance that the child is going to go wrong. Or I'm giving them a cube actually in their hand and I'm telling them, okay, count the number of edges that are there. So with this, I'm making it very concrete for them first. Then the next thing that we move to is using pictures. So C, P, A. So pictures. Now pictures are very important. And for pictures, as I told you in the first problem, where we just drew these simple boxes, we need a paper and pen. Now paper and pen also helps in developing neural connections in the child. So even if it is a scribble, that's why I like to call it as a scribble mathematics. That, okay, write the digits, you know, like while I'm reading a problem, like I'll give you an example of my kid. My kid is an auditory learner. So uh, for him, writing is the most difficult task. So if I tell him to write, that means it's like a punishment for him. So, you know, whenever he is trying to listen to the word problem or read the word problem, he will try to do everything mentally. Now, is, there, is this method wrong or is there any problem in this method? Not really. But what can happen is that there would be no neural connections. Our mind is so developed that it starts making connections of all the information that you're feeding the child with. And if I write it on the paper, that gets registered and it becomes like a soft memory in your brain. But we are depriving them when we are trying to do everything mentally. And that is why I encourage your children that whether it is just a paper and pen, just scribbles, no need to be very neat, no need to do anything, just visualize the problem, just make sure that you are understanding what's happening. Even writing important data, like for example, I say, okay, Sita has got 250 chocolates. So just making a note of Sita for S, just S, 250 tablets, that much is also enough to register and retain that information for a longer time. Because if in a given problem, there are more than two statements, especially I was uh, dealing this particular session with respect to IGCSE, they will always give you a scenario. scenario. Now, in that scenario, there are a lot of things that are happening. So what data is relevant and what data is not relevant is something that is very difficult for a child to just understand by reading. So in that case, making a picture or making these short notes is going to come very handy. So when they write it on a paper, they will understand, okay, this data I don't require or this is the data that I require. I'll take Sapna's example. For example, when we are talking about motion, we know that when we are talking about speed, we are basically interested in distance upon time. But what if I've also given you acceleration? So how would the child un understand that, okay, I don't need acceleration right now. My interest is that I need a distance and I need a time. So these kind of relations help a lot. Another thing that we can do, especially because uh, Sapna mentioned and I told her that I'm going to make it very specific for your needs. You could do like a pyramid of, um, you know, like distance, speed, time. 
you could do a simple picture like this. This pyramid means that, okay, if I want to determine speed, then I need these two factors. If I want to determine B, then I need these two factors. If I want T, then I need these two factors. So it's a simple pictorial representation to explain to the child that, okay, these this is what you need to remember. So instead of remembering it in a formula method, you can also remember it like a picture. Moving on, another thing, you could use models. I love this concept. Uh, we use a lot, till grade 5, we use a lot of such manipulatives uh, wherein we are asking the children to make these things. Like, for example, the other day I was teaching the kids uh, slightly higher classes, grade 8, where I was teaching them how uh, a particular... Um, you must be well aware in geometry, we have a theory in which we say that sum of all angles is 180. Now, uh, how would you prove this to a child? I mean, there is a mathematical proof, but anybody, any ideas as to how can we uh, prove this to the child? Any thoughts? We can uh, cut the corners. Mm -hmm. And this angle, uh, draw the triangle in a paper or and then uh, cut the three corners. So we get three angles right. and uh, keep them in a straight line. So you'll get it. Exactly. And exactly with that one little activity that we are doing, what are we actually telling them? You know, one of the, so when I was doing this particular activity with the children, they were asking me that, ma'am, uh, this is such a small triangle, you know. Like I told them to draw triangles of different shape. So they were very convinced that the big triangle is going to, uh, you know, make that 180 degrees and make a straight line. But they were not at all ready to think or predict that whether that small little triangle, which was this size, whether it is going to make that same, uh, you know, inference out of it. So it was very rewarding and very fun to see that you know, that shine in their eyes when they could actually fit those smaller pieces together and still make a straight line. So these small activities actually register with them as a very big concept as a whole. Another follow-up activity that we did in the same class was, uh, you know, there is another theory in triangles wherein it says that if you have sum of two sides, then the sum of two sides always have to be greater than the third side. Again, you know, when we were doing this activity also, we, so my approach always for such things is, I always tell the children to make predictions. That, okay, predict what would happen. And each one has a view to share. So some say it's possible. Do you think it's possible to make a triangle with this? Some say yes, some say no. And then there is a discussion as to why they think so. And with those discussions, it helps them to rationalize it helps them to problem solve see we the idea of this whole workshop is not only to remove the fear of maths but also help them appreciate maths and its uh, benefits because math can be an excellent problem solving tool in any areas or any sectors of their life so this is one of the uh, strategy that we can always use to make it more engaging and fun and use different colors because color therapy, again, works works wonders with children with different age groups. So age appropriately, you can use manipulators that are going to be interesting for them. Next and very important thing that we often neglect is seeing patterns in things. Has anybody worked with patterns and, you know, used an interesting strategy for their children to establish patterns? I'm sure each one of us has. So if you could share. Yes, Mr. Utkarsh. Yeah, uh, tried Fibonacci, uh, some initial few uh, additions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful pattern. And you know, Fibonacci sequence is actually there everywhere in nature. So if we can, you know, help them see that beauty uh, you know, your spirals, all kind of spirals are basically ba based on your Fibonacci sequence. So if you can help them appreciate that, that would be wonderful. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else has tried any other patterns?
What do we do when we are learning tables? Do we see a pattern? Multiples, yes. Multiples. Yeah, multiples, factors. All of this are nothing but patterns, sequences, right? When we are looking at, uh, say, in higher classes, I don't know what age group your children are, but those of you who are here, um, if you're looking at higher classes, uh, they have something called as arithmetic progression or harmonic progression or geometric progression. If you just are able to establish these patterns, this entire sequencing thing can be extremely fun and uh, enjoyable. Because then, you know, you start behaving like a detective. So I often tell my children that, you know, so uh, wherever there are topics like this, I design like a game wherein I make them detectives. And they have to come up with a pattern and decode a particular sequence. Trust me, make it a game and they will enjoy it. Because they are any which way thinking that, okay, I don't want to do maths because I don't understand. But if you make it into a fun element for them, I'm sure they're going to start enjoying that bit. And once they start enjoying, they are receptive. They are willing to learn more and more. So these kind of patterns is something that we should start seeing and, you know, help them uh, see it as well. Another thing is uh, number bonds, drawing diagrams, you know, simple diagrams. For example, when we, uh, these are for smaller classes, of course, factor three and all. But when you're looking at, bigger classes say for example i want to teach a concept of quadratic equations and i'm using a technique where i want to split the middle term so it helps so much like okay i want to split 24 in such a way that i want to get an 11 so what could be the factors that i'm looking at so let them write multiple factors right so six and four okay does six and four add up to a 11 maybe no Okay, 8 and 3, does it add up to 11? So just the visual helps them to register better. You could, so especially for quadratic equation, you could also add signs to it. For example, I need a negative 24. So what could be the signs of 84, 8 and 3? Can it be a plus and plus? Can it be a minus and minus? No, it will have to be different. Right. So these kind of uh, simple, what do you say, diagrams would be very useful to take your concept into uh, depth as well as help them visualize it better. Because otherwise, as I told you, it's a very abstract concept. So it's very difficult for them to register. Another thing that comes handy, especially when we are doing addends, and it is for children who really struggle with it, backward solving helps this also helps in higher classes i'm purposely taking one example of each uh, age group because i know there are mixed age uh, parents out here so one of this uh, solving backwards can work very beautifully when you're looking at problems where there is proving for example in higher classes you have trigonometry as one of the concepts trigonometry has a lot of proving wherein you have an lhs that is your left hand side and you have an rhs that is your right hand side so in order to establish a connection, all, children always think that we have to go from, you know, left to right. But that's not true. They can always start with the end product that, okay, what is it that I want? Okay, I want this. So let me work backwards. This can also be a real life implication. How, for example, let's say you're planning your career tomorrow. With You're sitting with your child, you're planning your career. What do we often do? is we don't decide the steps forward, but we move backwards. We say, okay, your career is all right. You want to become an IT graduate. Okay, now that you want to become an IT graduate, let's see what you need. Okay, so in 10th, I need a math for sure. Okay, in 12th, I need a computer science for sure. So this kind of working backwards can also help them apply that knowledge in their day-to-day -day life. So open up that perspective to them so that they become better decision makers in the future. Okay, now this is my absolute favorite strategy. When you are initially beginning with a child, I would recommend strongly to go without numbers. What do I mean by that? For example, if there is a problem, let's take the first problem that we saw that, okay, there were uh, six boxes and whatever, three chocolates, everything that was there. What if I remove the number three and six? Now, what is wrong with numbers? You may ask. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing is wrong with the numbers. But psychologically, 
our mind is so trained that when we see a numerical with numbers in it, our first focus doesn't go in reading the problem, but our first focus goes on seeing the numbers. And that's something that we don't want because we want to remove their focus from numbers alone to actually what the text says. Especially in IGCSE, everything is about comprehension. Understanding the sum or understanding the passage or understanding the context is something that they need to focus on. So tell them that forget or ignore the numbers for the time being. Or you make the worksheet or you write the problem in their notebook without the number in it. And tell them that, okay, what is it that you understand from this? See where they are understanding is and then you can go to correct them. Any questions so far? Anything at all? No? No. Okay, great. So, I will discuss two uh, important things that I have done in order to make it, um, in order to understand basically where our child needs help. This is a very important thing. Now, how will you gauge as a parent, as an educator, because I know we have parents and educators here, how would we guess or gauge what is that that my child really needs help? So how I like to do it is I like to divide it into two parts. One is going to be concept-based and the other is going to be procedural. For example, I will divide my curriculum or I will mark the sums which I know will she will be or he will be able to solve only when he knows the concept. And some I know that, okay, I have taught the process, he will be able to do it. Like for example, where application of formula is involved. For example, A plus B the whole square. Now, if I know this formula, I can apply it to n number of sums, right? So you can divide the problems into these two parts and see which one is that he's struggling with. If you think he's doing very well with the procedural part, but is struggling with the concept, then you it's an indication for you to do the concepts again with the child. In case you feel that the concepts are clear, but the procedure is an issue, then you can give them more and more worksheets for practice. Parents often feel, or educators also, often feel that, okay, if I give 10 worksheets on the particular, you know, uh, topic, then I'm doing too much work. And then why isn't my child still getting it? I gave her 10 worksheets. Often parents, when I do counseling for them, I often parents tell me, so why I gave her 10 worksheets, still she is not able to do. Why she is not able to do is because we have not found where the error is where she needs help. So I think dividing, simply dividing it into two parts gives us much more clarity and then it helps us uh, devise a remedial path for her or helps us devise a pattern in which she would be able to study. Another thing is uh, talking to them and understanding the difficulty level. That also helps a lot, especially uh, in children who are able to use calculators. For example, in IGCSE, uh, we are use, uh, using calculators a lot. Now with this, there is an advantage and a disadvantage. For sums which have procedural knowledge, it is extremely a boon because the child knows exactly what to do. For example, say I want to find compound interest. It is very simple for me to just feed the formula in the calci and my compound interest is going to come in the next one second. But if my child hasn't understood the concept, it is very difficult for him to even incorporate a formula in the calci. So even having a calculator will not help in such a situation. So understanding the child, talking to them about their problems and then devising a plan for their study is going to be of extreme help. These are my uh, inputs, basis, my experience with these children for so many years. You'll have any thoughts on what we uh, discussed today? Anything that you felt, Ki Subha, this is not working or this worked or yes, this is right, this is not right. Any thoughts? I think I agree. Fully I agree. It's, an, it's a confirmation of what I also think. Right. Because it is important to find out uh, the error first. Then we devise a plan. Sapna, any, any thoughts? Um... 
I I agree to what you're saying. Uh, I think I also have a question. Yes. Uh, like you know, uh, if uh, say for example with my daughter, I think uh, I have appointed different teachers also at different times, and uh, different things have been tried. The different methods have been tried with her. Uh -huh. So uh, there are things that work. There are things that didn't work. I think uh, mostly procedural uh, stuff, or you know. A straightforward uh, kind of approach uh, when the questions are all of similar kind or you know really one or two steps involving uh, then it works but Correct. the moment the uh, problem gets a bit complex or like in Cambridge as you said the problems are really analytical so yes. uh, it just goes for a toss so what I'm saying is uh, over time, I feel uh, even though I have seen the potential in my daughter that if, uh, you know, she's given enough time and things are done at her pace, she is not bad at maths. But somewhere she's developed a phobia hmm. of maths. How to deal with that? You know, when the child shuts down before even looking at uh, the subject or the problem. Right. In hmm. Uh, you have to put it out in a subtle way to her. Don't put it out as a math subject because see, already she has some... See, in children's mind, no, uh, they are very quick to make equations in their mind, okay? Equations, I mean, you know, relation. Okay, this is bad, this is good. And that also emerges from the fact that, you know, maybe that when she was doing math in her younger classes, she maybe uh, have been scolded at... Okay, or somebody must have told her that, what is this? You cannot even understand this. All these can leave lasting effects on the child, which we don't even realize. We just say it, you know, without even realizing that that has stayed with her. So to break that, you need to first make it fun for her. And then only you can actually work on the concepts. So to overcome the phobia, the first thing you have to do is make it fun. You can use manipulatives, try to uh, see what she likes. I'm sh I am I know she likes art. Yes? Yes. She's very creative. You have a biggest weapon in your hand. Art is so therapeutic. At the same time, such an excellent tool for introducing mathematics. I can't tell you. So put everything in the form of an art. We had a student who was uh, autistic. Okay, We um, had her for a couple of years with us. And uh, she was an excellent artist. So one of the strategies that I use for her, I would love to share. And you can adopt the similar uh, things uh, uh, for your daughter as well. Uh, what, she, what she used to do is everything was, you know, flowers for her. And everything was uh, nature related drawings is something that she loved. So when I wanted to introduce fractions for her, what I did was I made it into boxes. And I then told her that, you know, each box is representing one petal. So for her, immediate connection was made because it was something of her interest. And the entire addition of fractions, multiplication of fractions even, I taught her only through diagrams. I didn't teach her the method at all. The procedural method that we do, right? That make the denominators equal, cross multiply. Nothing I have taught her. I've only done through art. So this way, if you int start introducing, na, she, you wouldn't even realize when she's learned a lot of things. And use manipulatives. Let her feel. Let her touch. Because sometimes the senses also gi uh, give you a lot of inputs. So you could try that, one of the methods. Okay. Hmm. Sure. Anyone else has any questions? Uh, Elfwood, am I pronouncing that correctly? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I, you can. I mean, uh, is there Elfwood anywhere there? Yeah. Oh. Is there? Oh, I yes. See. I thought I am using my personal thing. I wonder. Okay. Achha, so this is your number okay. itself? Uh, yeah, but actually. I'm not supposed to use Elfwood. I thought I used my personal account of Zoom. Anyway, I'm Benjamin. No problem. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Okay, no good, problem. good. Okay. All, so all what, right. ma'am? Did you ask me anything? No. No, no, no. So I thought it's somebody else. So I was just wondering if they... No, I was. I it. just turned on the uh, PC, open huh. Zoom on PC in order to take that website. I will turn okay. it off. No problem. No go. problem. No problem. You can okay. keep it on. All right. Any more questions? Uh, and was this helpful in any which way. Anything that you would want to ask? 
so you had uh, mentioned uh, in the uh, somewhere in the poster uh, about hmm. stick figures. So, yes. Uh, anything specific? you want to share with, with regards to yeah that? so when i say uh, do uh, you know um, problem solving with artwork so what i mean by that is uh, like for example especially you know the age problems right for example aarti is 10 years older than ravi right in such cases i uh, always encourage my children to draw stick figures so instead of just naming them i tell them to give them a shape Okay, so let's say this is Ravi and let's say, you know, this is whatever, Swati. So I'm putting Swati with, you know, a uh, hair. So they just like to do all that and then it helps them build up a uh, relationship. So you could try this also. Anybody who loves art, this can be a great way to uh, teach them, make connection. This is all to, you know, set your neural pathways. Okay, so I just want to share. I actually make uh, pretty boring drawings and my daughter adds these to them. <laughs> yes, I am uh, actually, as I said, you know, I'm learning this from my own experience. So whenever I tell my son about anybody, he will start drawing pictures. <laughs> so that's how, you know, I know that this particular method does work. And they start relating to that character. And if they relate to the character, they are able to solve it better. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. So you should use a lot of stick figures and it doesn't take even a second. You know, we feel, oh, why you want to incorporate, uh, you know, art and maths. But no, you know, NEP with the launch of NEP, new education policy, people are now encouraging art integration in all the subjects. So we should be happy that we already have these tools and right. we can use them. Right. So it it is a very uh, fun and uh, and another very key thing that I always believe very firmly is it also depends upon your enthusiasm with which you are going to teach. If we are like, OK, let's just finish this job kind of an attitude. See, sometimes, you know, with my own kid, I'm telling you, if I've had a very long day and I still want to sit with him and I say, OK, Chalya, let's just finish this. I see that our lessons go very draggy. Because I am in no mood and, you know, I by default pass that vibe to my kid. So if we are enthusiastic, so another important crucial point to tap their uh, potential is to study when they are interested. It, homeschooling thankfully gives us that leverage wherein, uh, you know, we have all time in the world. Uh, to study so gauge what is the time when her mind is the most active it may take you a week to understand this process but it is really helpful because that is the time when uh, you know their brain capacity is working at the maximum and you are also fresh uh, when you are taking up the classes so that helps in making the connection more better otherwise it is a struggle it's a fight so whenever I am in that mood and I'm talking to my kid, we fight. <laughs> so if you don't want fights, <laughs> then uh, we better have both our modes in place. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you are already frustrated, you know. So when I am like, you know, on a crunch of time and I'm like, okay, I have only 15 minutes. Why can't you finish this? You know, by default, my body language becomes like, okay, I want you to finish because I don't have time to sit with you and wait till you understand. So choose a better time. That also solves millions of problems. Like these are all my experiences. I'm telling you, I am like that. So, you know, I get very irritated very fast uh, with my kid alone. Uh, with others, I'm very patient. So he says, yeah, Mama, I, this is not fair. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I totally agree. I think if I was a teacher, I would also be like that. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I might be much more patient with other kids, but I think that's the emotional uh, challenge that we have with our own kids. Exactly. Which is no normal, you know, which is okay. So uh, I have now learned over the period, you know, that uh, to say, uh, you know, sometimes he comes and he says, Mama, why aren't you taking like we were supposed to? So we usually sit at 6 37 every day. So he only tells me, Mama, why are you not coming? So I flat away tell him, Today let's not study. Because, you know, I know that that one hour when I am not in a position to deliver, I know that nothing is going to reach to him and it's a waste of my time and his. Might as well I sit uh, watching Netflix and I relax myself. Yeah. You know, and so, he enjoys yeah. his gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. One question that I have here yes. is, 
uh, like you said, uh, choose a time when the child wants to study. Yes. A lot of times I have seen, not a lot of times, but a few times I have seen that, uh, like earlier when I, when my daughter was, was with regular school, obviously because she would come home tired by four o'clock. Yes. So, and then she obviously needs a break for a while. In those days, I have seen, even though she had to wake up at six every day, the only time she would want to study was after nine o'clock. Uh -huh. And sometimes still 11 in the night. Correct. And right. uh, that's when she was active and attentive also. So, but that doesn't work for me. And so, hmm. she's not in school, yeah. Then it's, it should have worked better, but now it's working worse. So, I yeah. what I'm doing is uh, right now, what I'm doing is I am, uh, I try to fix most of her classes in the morning. Hmm. Uh, but I, I, I have started to realize that she doesn't like to study the first thing in the morning, like after exactly. Her yeah. So, exactly. uh, but I'm, I'm, I can be flexible over the day, but my problem is that I don't want to study very late in the night, you know, like oh. the, because she's into teenage now. So exactly. I she understand. She wants to be awake late and all that. So, uh, so that's another challenge that I have to. No, do. so talk it out with her. Tell her, see, you don't want to study in the morning. Fair enough. I don't want to study late at night. That's fair by my, me. So let's come to a midpoint. Let's study in the afternoon instead. You know, you need to talk. You need to speak to them as mature individuals because mm -hmm. they have an opinion of their selves, right? And we can't mm -hmm. just keep shutting them every time and we can't even start imposing our decisions onto them because then you are like, you know, a bad mother. <laughs> I mean, not a bad mother, but yeah, they uh, they are upset with us and we don't want to be uh, want them to be upset, right? We want to yeah. want them to enjoy what they're doing. So I think just talk it out and okay. I'm sure she will be fine. And they do reach, you know, like I used to tell him, like he used to say, I don't want to study at this time. And I told him very clearly that, you know, see, this is the time. If if you don't want that, then you have to study on your own and you have to show me results. So throw the ball in their court, no? Yeah. They definitely need our support, right? Right. So throw the ball in their court, make them accountable. Let it come from them. <laughs> We have to be one lot smarter than them to get things done. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. almost tried that today, but let's see how it goes. It it will work. Trust me. Give it time and uh, see the minute, you know, you start, uh, I think as parents, you know, we are very used to, because maybe the way we have been brought up, it we feel that, you know, our children should be protected all the time. And it is not correct that as a parent, if I share my weakness or my vulnerability with my child, it makes me look weak. But trust me, it's nothing like that. In fact, the more uh, I share with my child my vulnerability, sometimes he surprises me with the kind of suggestions that he comes up with. So I think we need to break out more from our shell than our children. Mm. Yeah. You know, it happens. It happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> A lot to think over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, please do. And, and do share with me, like, you know, whether it worked, it didn't. It gives us a different perspective, you know, because everybody's journeys are different. So yeah. how we could. Yeah, because I have started to feel that it's uh, it's more to uh, teaching than just the subject, a lot more than the subject itself. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Every subject is like that, you know, it is much more than understanding the child and making the child understand the, uh, not only understand, but develop the love for the subject that's when they will be able to excel. So that is something. So anyway, just to uh, sum it up, uh, I was uh, hoping that there would be more participants. There were quite a lot of registrations, but uh, we had a nice close-knit discussion. So I'm very happy and thankful that all of you could join. And uh, I had a good time. I don't know about you, but I enjoyed uh, sharing my uh, little inputs. Uh, so 